My question for today is, who crucified Jesus? I imagine some may have blamed Judas. I mean, after all, it was his betrayal that led to Christ's death. Perhaps Pilate is to blame, for he had the authority to call the whole thing off. Pilate, if confronted, would probably have blamed the unruly mob, for they were the ones yelling, crucify him, crucify him. For the whole thing would have turned into a riot if they didn't get their way. The people in the crowd would blame the Jewish leaders, for they were the ones who shouted crucify him to begin with, which got the, the crowd all riled up. The Jewish leaders would have blamed the Romans, for they were the ones who actually nailed the spikes into the Lord's hands and feet. We love to play the blame game. And this goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden when Adam blamed Eve because she gave him the apple. And then Eve blamed the serpent for deceiving her. That is where it all started. Sin entered the world and the blame game began. And we've been playing the blame game ever since. Over the years, we've gotten really good at the blame game. You just turn on the news, and we can see it in full force. It's Biden's fault. It's Trump's fault. It's Obama's fault. It's, it's Putin's fault. It's Elon, Elon Musk's fault. OPEC's fault. Old dead white guy's fault. The Constitution's fault. The Supreme Court's fault. Mexico's fault. Mexican cartel's fault. China's fault, Fauci's fault, CDC's fault, Big Pharma's fault, Wall Street's fault, the NRA's fault, video games' fault, Hollywood's fault, music's fault, Hunter Biden's fault, the Democrats' fault, Republicans' fault, it's the school's fault, it's the teacher's fault, parents' fault, it's the cops' fault, the black man's fault, the woman's movement fault. The Catholic Church's fault. The Southern Baptist Convention's fault. Christianity's fault. Organized religion's fault. It's God's fault. <laughs> the list is endless. So many people and institutions are to blame for today's problems and the suffering in today's world. We hear it over and over again every day in every media outlet. Do you know what we never hear anymore? It's my fault. It's my fault. It takes courage to say it's my fault. Admitting you were wrong. Admitting you made a poor decision. It is hard because if you admit you're wrong, then you have to face the consequences. You have to have guts and moral fortitude to suffer the consequences for your mistakes. You have to face the fact that you aren't as good as you led yourself to believe. You have to come to terms with reality about yourself. And that can be very painful. Last week, I told the stories of Sybil Luddington and the little girl from Israel, emphasizing the fact that God can use one act of obedience, no matter how small, and create a ripple effect of good beyond our wildest dreams. Unfortunately, the opposite is also true. An act of disobedience, a sinful deed, can also have a ripple effect beyond our imagination. I'm sure Adam and Eve had no idea of the evil unleashed by their act of disobedience. The world looks at God's ways as archaic, irrelevant, unenlightened, oppressive, restrictive, and not fun. 
We say, you know, what we do in our private lives doesn't hurt anybody. Nothing can be further from the truth. I've said before that God is not a cosmic killjoy, but rather a loving father setting boundaries so his children don't hurt themselves and others. But like rebellious teenagers, we think we know better. We think we know what is best, and we make decisions without full knowledge or experience. We disregard the teachings from the past, and we repeat the same mistakes. We don't count the cost. We don't consider the consequences. We rationalize everything we do, both as individuals and as a society, and when things go south, we point fingers at others. We claim that that we are the victims and demand some sort of bailout or fix so that we don't have to face or endure the painful consequences, so that we don't have to face ourselves in the mirror and face the truth. And since we don't face the truth, we don't know what the truth is. We've redefined it. We've made it relative so we can dodge it, so it won't stick on us. We become so good at the blame game, we don't even realize it, realize that we're playing it anymore. We are swimming in the waters of a sin-filled culture, not realizing that our sinful decisions are not only adding to the water, but are the water. Sin isn't just something we do, it is who we are. The blame game is so prevalent, we can't see that we are the problem. We can't see that our solutions aren't solutions at all, that they are temporary fixes that have consequences that add to the problem down the road. A solution that is clean and pure and right can't come from the cesspool that we are content in swimming in. No, the solution has to come from something outside of us, something outside of the sin-filled waters that we are swimming in. Therefore, the only way we can see or implement that solution is if that solution reveals itself to us. And I would argue that in most cases, the solution reveals itself, or I should say becomes evident, through our suffering. All human suffering is a result of sin. None of the things that cause our suffering today were present in the Garden of Eden, nor will they be present in heaven. Contrary to product marketing, suffering is not abnormal for this world. We may be able to temporarily avoid it, through medication, a new relationship, a vacation, shopping, alcohol, name your coping mechanism. But suffering will return. It is the very water we swim in. There is a purpose in our suffering, however, for it is the very thing that will change us. There is a great quote by Dr. Henry Cloud that that says, we change our behavior when the pain of staying the same becomes greater than the pain of changing. Consequences give us the pain that motivates us to change. It is the pain that makes us receptive to the solution. C.S. Lewis wrote, God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pain. It is, it, it is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. God wants the world to wake up and realize that there is one solution a solution that isn't man-made, a solution that doesn't come from a sin-filled mind in a sin-filled world, but rather comes from the creator himself. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 16. Unfortunately, suffering doesn't always drive a person to Christ, but sometimes drives them away from God. Rather than seeing God as the solution to the problem, the person sees God as the cause. When there is no one left in the blame game except God and self, many choose God to blame rather than self. Today's scripture is from the prophet Isaiah. It was written... 700 years before Christ's death. This is Isaiah 53, 5, and it begins, But he, being Jesus, was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sins. Notice who is named as the one who crucified Jesus. Was it Judas? Yes, he's in there. Pontius Pilate? Yep. The crowd? Yep. The Jewish leaders? Yep. The Romans? Yep. But also included in the word our is me and you. He was pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our sins. We may not have actually pounded the spike through his hands, but we are guilty. We may not be directly related to the pain we suffer today, but we are guilty. Our sin contributed to the ripple effect of evil in this world. And I believe this with all my heart. So I can say... Right now, right here, this morning. It's my fault. The pain you are experiencing today, the sickness, the heartache, the evil, even the high gas prices. It's my fault. Fortunately for me, And those of you who can say the same thing, the sermon doesn't end here. This is, I'm sorry, there is is good news because Isaiah continues in that same verse. The punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed. Because it is my fault, there are eternal consequences for my sin. There is a penalty that has to be paid for justice to be met, and it is the death penalty. A spiritual death where I am separated from God for all eternity. For my sin makes me unholy, and I therefore cannot be in the presence of a holy God. But the good news is the punishment due me was placed on Christ. Christ took the punishment. And so now there is peace between me and God the Father. For Christ's wounds, his blood, heals me of my sinfulness, covers my sin, credits me with the righteousness of Christ so that I can be in the presence of a holy God forever. And this good news isn't just for me, but for anyone who believes that the solution is found in Christ and his work on the cross. You see, once you are his, once you are his child, he gives you his spirit to indwell you and change your heart, taking you on a journey that makes you less sinful and more Christ-like. You then do less sinful things that add to the evil of the world and do more things by the power of the Spirit within you 
that add to the good in the world. God uses you to show Christ to others so that their hearts too will be changed. And the incredible ripple effect of good keeps back the progression of evil and more suffering. The world is only changed by changed hearts and only God can change hearts. The world can change, for God can change the world through us so long as we are obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit, so long as we shine the light of Jesus into the world. We will still suffer pain until we are called home to heaven, but we will do so in the grace and strength and power and comfort and peace given to us through Christ. Jesus said in John 16, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. You see, you only win the blame game when you take the blame. It is only when you accept the blame, accept the consequences and the pain that you will seek the solution. And only when you find the solution will you experience the forgiveness, mercy, love, peace, comfort, wholeness, significance, purpose, and life you so desire. Repent and believe. Acknowledge your sinfulness, the, the part you have contributed to the pain and suffering in this world. And then believe in the solution. End the blame game today and say before God, it, it's my fault. Please help me to believe and trust that Jesus is the solution for my pain and suffering. That he is not the cause. And then watch how God does amazing things in your life. Please pray with me. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come before you. We come before you acknowledging that there is much pain and suffering in this world. We come before you acknowledging that it is us who has caused the pain and suffering in this world. We are the problem. And as the problem, we cannot be the solution. But you give us the solution. You have given us the solution and your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for us, that through him we may be forgiven, we may be justified, we may be made righteous, so that we can spend eternity in heaven with you. God, we thank you for this incredible gift. Help us to recognize it if we haven't already. Help us to repent. Repent of our sinful behavior and turn, turn away from it. Reject it. And seek the help of the Holy Spirit to move us away from our sinful decisions that cause the pain and move us towards the righteous decisions that the Holy Spirit leads us to make that we may bring good in the world that you may bring good in the world through us 
that we may glorify you with our lives, that we may shine the light of Christ and other people so that they too may be forgiven, that they too may receive a changed heart, recognizing the solution is through Christ. Help us, Lord. Give us the courage to admit our wrongdoing. Help us to say, it is my fault. Help us to stop blaming others for the things that we have caused. Help us to stop blaming you. Help us to take responsibility. And help us to receive the incredible gift of comfort and peace that you offer us. The healing that you offer us. The eternal life that you offer us through Christ. We give you all the thanks and praise for who you are, Lord, and what you are doing in our lives. May the glory be yours. And we pray these things in Jesus', Jesus name. Amen.